everybody, thanks for watching. Be Better Golf. I'm out here in Superstition Mountain Golf Club again with Milo Lines. Hi, Milo. See you. Milo and I, after our first series of videos, uh, really wanted to get together again to talk deeper about impact and, and the ground forces into the, into the ground, which uh, we'll talk more about later. But Milo, I wanted to make this video today because we talk so much in, in a lot of our videos, and I know a lot of Be Better golfers are so obsessed with impact and getting the hands leading through impact and uh, kind of hitting more of a shallow trap shot almost yep. rather than like a, a, a ballooning flip shot. Uh -huh. But when we were out on the course, I noticed you don't want to, you don't want to always every shot be being hitting these shallow traps, especially with wedges. You want, you want to sometimes hit that shot to a back pin, uh -huh. but sometimes like I had from 50 yards, I'll try to cut it in yesterday. You want to hit it like higher and make it land and stop. You want to do all kinds of trajectories with your wedges, right? Sure. Yeah, you want to be able to control your flight and your spin. Um, sometimes you do want your full swing dynamics for wedge shots, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want to, I call them finesse wedges, you want to hit them with more of a finesse type motion where you're actually letting the club unload and pass you. So before we get into something fancy, so to speak, uh, hit just like a normal one. We got a 75 yard shot here. A normal wedge shot? Yeah. So, so if this was just a right, big green, flags right in the center of a flat green. It would look more like my normal swing, something like that. Yeah. So let's just go. Hit it. Hey. <laughs> you did. <laughs> so, so let's let's go. Let's go uh, from back to front, just because. So now, if you wanted to, if it was the same thing, a 75-yard shot, but you had a lot of green in front of the flag, and you you wanted to land it and kind of roll it in towards you might, the flag, you might trap it a little more and take it in lower. So. How would you do that? Maybe move the ball just slightly back, and then when I hit this one, I'm going to try to make sure I hit it with the handle a little bit more forward, and so the ball is going to come off a little bit more like that, a little lower trajectory. But how do you do that? Like, I know you want to hit it with the handle more forward. Are you taking a shorter backswing? Are you setting the handle more forward and, at address? I started with the ball slightly back in my stance. Yeah. And then when I hit it, I, I use more of my full swing dynamics, which compress me into the ground a little bit more and my pivot is a little quick. So there's a little bit more speed in my rotation. All right, so if we're gonna put like in a title, the, the keys for then how to hit it lower, that would be ball back in stance. Ball back. A, a shorter backswing. A little shorter with a little quicker tempo. A shorter backswing and then a, a quicker tempo through yep. the ball. So you're, you're turning through a little faster. Try that. Okay. So I wanna hit one. Well, I'll just try the normal one first. So norm, normal would be there. Okay, okay. That's about the height of my wedges. So if I wanted to bring this one in lower, I would, I'm going to go back in my stance more. Back, maybe narrow your stance slightly. Yeah. Feet closer together. Yep. And then I'm going to take kind of quicker tempo back. Quicker tempo through. Yep. Oh yeah. Came down a bit. Came down a bit. But if I want to hit one like as low as you, that's just. I felt like I didn't keep moving. You've right? got to keep moving, and you've got to. You're going to feel like that club is being held on your hand by your turn. Oh, I see. I see. So we're going feet closer together, ball back in the stand slightly. More like that. That was really low. Yeah, well, extreme, but that's yeah. the idea. That was good. Cool. All right, so then then on the other side, if this is 75 yards, but we only have like four yards of green in front of the pin, um, how, how are we going to approach hitting it higher and having it land and stop more? So we're going to do some of the opposite things. So now we're going to let the ball float forward in the stance a little bit more. And when, as we swing, instead of loading into the ground and using more pivot force, I'm going to feel like I stay tall and almost stand up a little bit as I hit it which is going to force the club to unload. And is your tempo going to be a little more It's going to be a little bit, yeah, slower. a little smoother, a little longer motion. So it'll look something like this. Ball a little more forward. There we go. The same length. Went a lot higher. This is, because I'm always trying to 
have to toe through the club. This is a shot that's now tough for me. So I would. So I'm going to go move the ball hair forward. Hair forward. My stance is more normal width, right? Yeah, I would actually. For most wedge shots, I'm a little more narrow than that. Okay. But I'd have it more forward than that even. There you okay, go. so this is like three wood ball position almost. Almost, yeah. Yeah. And you're just going to feel like you stay tall and let it unload. Didn't really go low. That didn't go low, or you hit it a little thin. Okay, so I'm here. It needs to be taller. And then as you go through it, you're going to feel like you're almost standing up. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's interesting because the standing up causes the causes that. Yeah. In, in a good way for this shot, but then in a full swing, that if you're here and you stand up, that would be in a bad way. Well, it would be wouldn't be what you wanted, right? Because right. right here, you're not looking to compress it that hard. You're looking for the finesse. Right. So then, if I'm if I'm bringing this down to like 50 yards, which I probably would start to use a different club, but here, more like that, right? Yep. Yeah, I like that kind of stand up on purpose to get the loft out of it. There you go. That's cool. Nice soft look. And then there too, kind of like you were telling me on the course yesterday, I can finish like that and like this. Yeah. You know, you don't have to hit it like that and like kind of Lee Trevino burning wedge it. You don't have to. That's Especially cool. Especially with the balls we play now, you know, when, when Trevino was playing, he was playing balladas mainly. Yeah. So he could spin the crap out of those things. Yeah, he was talking about those burning wedges he would always try to hit. Yeah. But with these, we sometimes we need height. So you've got to be able to let the club swing past you. Right. And especially like if I was going to hit a 30 or 40 yarder that had a lot of spin and was soft. So it would come out really high. All right, guys, you can learn more about Milo over at Golfletics. We have this really cool thing coming out called the Driving Force where We've brought Dr. Scott Lynn out here for two days, getting on the force plate, seeing really what's happening into the ground with a great driver of the golf ball and a really structured system of how you can then figure out how you should use the ground and then when, when and where to use the ground to get a lot more consistent. Thanks for watching, everybody. You'll check that out over at beavittergolf.net slash premium. See ya. I'm getting right. a stretch here, and then as I change directions, now I'm, I'm, I'm getting more bent over. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that makes my rear end move back. Yeah, I mean, the downswing so, is 0.2 seconds, oh, okay. and to be able to drop and come back up is a ridiculous amount of athleticism. Yeah. Um, you're pretty athletic. You happen, like, kind of just the top right before the top of the backswing really good. I mean, I would say the average amateur, I try to get them to, to have that little low preload or whatever you want to call it um, during the backswing. And even some, you know, older people, I'll have them preload at setup. Like that little squatty kind of knee and hip flexion that you do, if, if you're really late and you're kind of an older golfer, sometimes just getting more of that at setup is great because by the time it gets to the club, it's on time. Hundred into the lead side right here, just as the club starts to move back and then the pressure starts to go back into his trail side. That's his trigger. If your lead knee releases back, then generally your pressure is gonna, gonna move, move back. more back. Yeah. You definitely got a hundred, yeah. Yeah. And then what you'll do, when you're hitting your 100 swing, if you hit 10 swings where you're trying to get 100 in and you hook eight of them, now you know, oh, that's what causes my hook. And so if you get on the course and it starts hooking, now you have a strategy, oh, I gotta stay a little more. You don't see many people go down here and stop and then jump up. Yeah. But as we get older and as our nervous systems stop functioning as quite as well, then that stretch run cycle doesn't work quite as well yeah. as it used to. And so some people may have to load a little bit slower. Your preload where you're dropping, you, you only weigh 90 pounds on the plate. So I'm about half my weight, about half your body weight, yeah. And then I feel like I, I catch myself with my, my weight pretty much on my, right on the center of my feet, I would guess. Is that where it looks like it lands to you? Uh, let me check. So you are right on 50-50 at the peak. When I catch, it goes like that way. Yeah. And in golf, you can't just make one change, right? Yeah. The brakes are so hard. I'm pushing hard yeah. against the ground. And then as the club's moving, I keep pushing a different direction. But right here is where you need to break. There you go. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah. oh there's actually a ramp. Yeah, there. it's a big spike. You really started to ramp up the brakes just just before you got the club parallel to the ground. <laughs> and my club speed went way up. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. 130 again. <laughs>